Friends, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to Hasib Electronics. In this video, I will discuss how we can use storage oscilloscope. Before this, I uploaded an introductory video that was just only introduction. I am sorry my most of videos are too much long but I have no solution because when I want to explain anything when I want to demonstrate anything I need some time for best explanation explaining very nicely we need some time because I don't want to cover any subject just only by pressing buttons and uh, skipping any, anything. First of all, I have digital oscill storage oscilloscope DSO5102 BM. This is Hentec. I am not promoting any equipment, I am not promoting any firm, anything. I am just sharing my experience. Here is power on button. This two channel 100 megahertz digital storage oscilloscope. In my last video I we discussed what is difference between a multimeter and oscill oscilloscope. In the last video we discussed oscilloscope is used to show a real time signal on the screen. Like a multimeter, multimeter just only gives any reading on the display. If I want to check voltage, he will show DC voltage frequency, AC voltage frequency, millivolt like this. But here is different scenario. We have two channels. What is channel? Channel is a complete standalone measurement system. We can compare voltage, we can compare wave shape, we can compare signals. I will show you now. Here is a measurement prop. It is 10 time and 1 time attenuation. Here is a switch to attenuate to reduce the signal. If I will use one time and if I will apply one volt, it will reach one volt here in the BNC connector end. And if I set it to X10, then this probe it have a divider network it will decrease the signal 10 times that time if I will apply 1 volt here between neutral and the test probe at X1 it will give 1 volt to this pin and if I put X10 apply 1 volt it will give 0.1 volt here it will divide 10 times ok now I will connect it here and if I want to measure voltage here from the output of this transformer I will connect one ground here and I will connect I have a test pin here I can test directly here I can test directly or for more easy testing I will connect it here so my hands are free now I am free to use this one ok I will use the other probe also one time so now I will connect ground here common here and I will connect to this here I have auto set this button auto set it will adjust automatically 
to the voltage level I will try to adjust it for more clear view I have I have manual oscilloscope and I have four channel automatic digital oscilloscope but this one is more flexible other than this these are tectronics tectronics 475 tectronics 475 and tectronics 2246 I have other oscilloscopes but this one it's my favorite it's very easy to use now I I connected two channels I will set auto set now I have both signals both channels channel 1 and channel 2 if we see this portion it is called vertical this one is vertical and this one is horizontal setting in vertical I have two portions one is yellow button yellow line that means this display is to channel 1 the signal applied to channel 1 is displayed here blue color signal blue color signal that is at channel 2 and I can check where is channel 1 this is channel 2 and this one is channel 1 so yellow color is marked channel 1 channel 2 now I can measure the voltage first of all I will show you the controls here I have vertical control this one is vertical position where I want to set the signal position I can adjust it this is channel 2 I can adjust channel 2 anywhere with wherever I want then vertical position then I have voltage setting here the display what is the voltage level voltage setting for channel 1 that is 10 volt now so 10 volt now what is the voltage level here we can measure very easily I discussed in my last session how we can calculate manually now to measure the voltage here we can turn off turn on any channel now the light is off now no channel is appeared here if I want to test the channel 1 channel 1 signal is available if I will press channel 2 the channel 2 will signal appear here on the screen and I will adjust the bottom line of the signal then I will move this signal horizontally in this way I will adjust until here in the small partitions of the vertical line center line so here I have one square second grade third four so this signal is covering one two three four four point seven four point seven and one grid represents to 10 volt now our signal is covering 4.7 multiplied by 10 this is 47 volt peak to peak signal 47 volt peak to peak forty seven volt peak to peak this is at channel one this is channel one yes this is channel one I removed the signal so now we will check on multimeter at multimeter it will show 16 volt 16 volt AC now I have 
14, 47 volts. So 47 volt is peak to peak. If I will divide by 2 to get half peak, it will come 23.5. This 23.5 volt, volt peak, if I will adjust it to the center, so I will take 23.5. And if I want to, because our multimeter reads true RMS, RMS voltage, so take RMS voltage is 0 0.707 multiplied by V peak, so it will 16 volt approximately. So when we will multiply by calculator, 23.5 multiplied by 0 0.7 by 7 that is the RMS voltage so we will take 16 volt on multimeter so our oscilloscope is showing peak to peak voltage and we can see the shape of the signal we can see the shape of the signal so here is vertical setting horizontal setting in vertical mode we measure amplitude of the signal. In horizontal mode, we calculate the time. We calculate time. Time of signal. One cycle. From where to where one cycle is coming, we can calculate it here. If I want to make measurement, measure, it will give me the frequency 49.95 Hertz period means and different calculations maximum 26 26 volt and minus 20 21 volt from the center portion now I have two signals we can check the phase difference between the both Now I am taking from the same source, but if there is any voltage, any phase difference between the both, we can find what is the phase difference between these signals. If one signal is leading, one signal is red, lagging, leading, lagging, so we can find the phase difference. Then when we press auto set, it will give, give us option how many cycles we need to set. We need continuous measure measurement or we need single cycle. If I press single cycle, now just only one cycle and then it is stopped. It take one sweep, one roster and then it is stopped. Then we have mathematical menu between the two signals two channels if I will press this he will say channel 1 plus channel 2 the measurement between the channel 1 and channel 2 is appear in red menu channel 1 plus channel 2 the signal available in the channel 1 and channel 2 will appear at the red menu in the red scale then channel then channel 1 minus channel 2 that will appear the resultant signal will appear here voltage here voltage here the resultant voltage what is the voltage difference between the two lines will appear here we can measure them very easily so we can adjust we can check here we can split two portions one is with graph and one is measurement menu now channel 1 minus channel 2 channel 2 minus channel 1 channel 1 multiplied by channel 2 here channel 2 minus channel 1 we can see the resultant is here the channel 2 
is higher than the channel 1 then we have channel 1 minus multiplied by channel 2 the result will here then we have channel 1 divided by channel 2 the resultant signal will appear here these are mathematical calculations with respect to phase with respect to voltage with respect to time period so now I will return back to the original position then I have if I will press channel 1 channel 1 menu will appear here in the front of function number 1 there is a DC coupling the coupling type DC coupling AC coupling or ground if I set automatic it will automatically monitor the signal the processor and then it will adjust the display to adjust display properly if I will press ground the channel 1 signal will not display anything so I should select it for any coupling DC or AC coupling so this time I am measuring AC so I have to set it AC coupling then I have 20 megahertz bandwidth limit this is 100 megahertz signal oscilloscope if I will disable 20 megahertz limit on it will work as a 100 megahertz and if I will set it to 20 megahertz that time this will display this will measure up till maximum 20 megahertz so I have to set it at 20 megahertz then voltage per division coarse are fine in manual oscilloscopes we have coarse and fine switch but here I have just only one knob so I have to select the option what type of adjustment I need coarse adjustment or fine adjustment always set it to coarse then what type of probe I am using 10 time 1 time 100 time 1000 time I am using one time this time I am not making any attenuation so I have to set one time probe then invert signal if you want to invert signal the display will be reversed we can say the original signal will be inverted ok now it is very easy more, more easy for demonstration if we find two signals here we can see this time we have opposite signals we have opposite signals this is out of phase signal we can say 180 degree, inver degree inverted signal out of phase signal when this peak is going high this peak is going low so we can compare two signals between the two test terminals phase difference how much is phase difference we can set by the knobs and we can see the phase difference between the two portions we can see we have out of phase signal here so we can measure how much is the phase difference between the both we can check rise time fall time period okay so we can we can check here period how much is the period between two signals modify if I want to check peak to peak signal I will adjust it using F4 function peak to peak ok it will show me peak to peak voltage then modify if I want to check rise time so it will show, show me the rise time of the signal then we have another facility here if I want to store this signal in my USB I have to adjust install it 
it will give me USB device detected and I will just save to USB it will save this display in the USB so I can connect this USB to my computer and then successful save to USB so I saved this signal in the USB anytime I can check the result of this test it is as a record or we can it is as a pattern so now channel 1 I will turn off invert okay invert is off then we can see we have the both signals in line one time probe okay then I can save this signal also to my USB so this signal will also saved now we can check the phase difference between the two signals I have these two signals I will put it stop now this time the display is freezed I will put cursor and if I want to check time measurement I will put it F1 cursor F1 so here we will find vertical bars so if you want to measure the time between I will adjust this knob it will show the time so I can measure time between two signals this is stop and this is stop start and stop so I will adjust if I will adjust from this negative peak to this negative peak 19.80 millisecond and frequency is 1 over dt is 50, 50 hertz frequency so we can measure the frequency between of one signal we can adjust it at any place F and S so we can see here is 10 millisecond so we can move to any place next we if we want to check voltage I set it voltage so if I set voltage first I have to move this signal measurement signal at the top end okay now I can measure voltage by means of adjusting this cursor so here it will show me 5.1 volt 5.1 volt if I want to check any portion of the signal I can measure it here 3.9 volt 4 volt 4.96 so here the total signal value is 5.1 volt and if I want to check this signal I will move this signal up and yellow signal I will bring down and this signal I will move to cursor area and which source I want to check channel 2 channel 2 he will say here are 22 volt again I will move channel 2 signal down and channel 1 signal up I have to set channel 1 so it will calculate the channel 1 setting channel 1 setting now applied and I will move the cursor to that point and I will find 4.88 volt 5 volt are just in the top corner of the signal and here bottom and top two movements move the signal to the top end 
and we can adjust so now we can adjust the track voltage voltage and time period both will be displayed here 4.5 volt and 3.3 volt so it will continuously monitor the signal between these two points voltage and frequency here it will measure the voltage and here it will measure the frequency then time and off and voltage and track so here track what function you want to check channel source 1 channel 2 or math function so it will give all the time results here so here we can adjust the time and we can adjust the signal to monitor the frequency so it is displaying signal here we can put my ear and it will show us 1 kilohertz 2.88 volt and all the measurements are displayed here in form of voltage in form of frequency everything is here so if you, I will connect this signal to channel 1 it will show me there so we can monitor the signals suppose I have a switch mode power supply and I want to check it it is very useful tool if we can use it it is very very useful suppose I have this switch mode power supply and I want to troubleshoot I connected it so if I want to check the voltage I will connect it ground here and we can measure I will remove the test prop we can measure the voltage here at any point so it will give us the reading 5.2 volt if I have 5.2 volt here I will adjust and we can see we have a very small ripples in the capacitor so if we have a most ripple more ripples that means we have problem in the power supply and we can check the output of transformer so I connected here channel 1 we can see the response I have 89 volt it is switching of the transformer I will make it to 10 time attenuation so that the signal should be displayed here we can see it is switching of the transformer we are seeing the output here we have output so we can find different voltage different levels this is 5 volt section I have to so in this way it is switching my ear modify frequency okay it is switching at 50 kilohertz 
our SMPS this SMPS switch mode power supply pulse width modulator it is switching at 50 kilohertz at 50 kilohertz so using oscilloscope we can test the switching frequency switching signal we can check the optocouplers and we have voltage we can see at ground side at the positive side we have one volt signal okay so in this way we can test many parameters of the circuit we can see I have two diodes here one diode two diode this diode the input side is in this way and the output side is regulated DC voltage so here I have 5 volt regulated but if I see I don't have capacitor here so our this section is not regulated the diode is in making rectification diode is making rectification but the output voltage are not regulated why because the capacitor is missing if capacitor is present we have one capacitor in this point and this point so if any anywhere we have capacitor in internally open we can trace very easily with oscilloscope but oscilloscope is very sensitive device so we use multimeter most of the time then we have trigger menu trigger menu is used when we want to make a condition this signal this voltage available maybe we have an other third signal we make condition to this oscilloscope measure the voltage when this signal will arrive here suppose this signal will arrive because when we uh, test complicated circuits we use clock signals we use drive signals and we want to any signal when this signal will appear here measure this voltage so when this signal will appear it will make a sample of this voltage this time when this signal at the trigger external trigger will appear at that time it will make switching it will make a sample and it will display the signal normal use we use these parameters we want to measure rise time fall time that is very advanced work that's not a simple work but I will demonstrate how we can test suppose auto set it will automatically measure the signal and now we have here so now cursor I want to check rise time or fall time so we can adjust if I want to this signal is zero end and if I want to measure fall time fall time that means from the positive peak to negative peak 
how much time it will take that is called fall time from the positive peak to zero line any signal how much time it will take that is called fall time so here it gives me 9.6 milliseconds so if I want to measure time duration between I can enlarge this signal I can set anywhere where, wherever I want if I want to enlarge the signal so I have to adjust that signal I will adjust horizontal and then I will move the cursor if I want to measure the signal between time between this portion it give me 4.9 milliseconds and the from top it give me 9.5 milliseconds if I want to measure the rise time from the negative end to any part of the signal we can check 4.5 4.6 millisecond 4.5 millisecond 4.8 millisecond so we can adjust the signal using horizontal bar horizontal position and then we can measure the signal between rise time fall time we can check voltage we can from here if I want to check voltage we can adjust the signal and we have to set that setting channel 1 setting and at what point we want to test suppose we want to measure this this peak it will give me 10 volts if I want to measure this portion of signal from the bottom and between this cursor it will give me 29.6 volt so using cursor function then we have save recall function if I want to press save it will ask me do you want to set as a reference you okay reference setup CSV animation what you want set what you want reference okay reference is channel 1 done save what will the reference for channel 1 save saved successfully now we have this reference now this signal we have another signal suppose and I want to recall reference recall the last signal which we saved and we can now we can now compare this signal with that one so if the signal will same now I have another signal so this signal at channel B that was the original signal if I have a serviceable PCB working PCB I can take a pattern and I can save here pattern then I can compare with a bad PCB first I will take signal from working PCB and I will make it save as a reference to which one channel 1 and save it will save the data then I will connect an other PCB and I will take signal and then I will press uh, save and recall press reference recall it will recall the reference and we can compare the both signals if the both signals the good PCB and bad PCB signals are good we can say this portion of circuit is good and we have to troubleshoot the other portion recall uh, reference A reference B whatever want then there is a button uh, default setup if you will press default setup it will go to the original factory setting then there is a help menu okay trigger menu then in the trigger menu 
what type of triggering we need edge triggering video triggering pulse triggering and uh, what type of source we use normally we use channel 1 or channel 2 and if I want to use external source we will set ext using f2 function or uh, we can trigger at line frequency AC 50 Hertz so it will trigger at AC line voltage trigger and what type of triggering we need a rising slope or falling slope it's up to negative trigger or positive trigger we can adjust it here and mod what for what type of mod we need triggering auto or manual always set it to auto mod then the coupling trigger trigger what type of trigger we need AC, DC coupling AC coupling noise, noise rejection HF high frequency reject or low frequency rejection normally DC coupling so then we have utility utility is for the oscilloscope itself that is system information firmware updates save waveform and uh, self calibration put it to self calibration it will calibrate automatically then we have different keypad beeps and settings UI colors and time system defaults system status and everything is here so utility is here F0 it's off then display what type of display we need if we need DSO mod digital storage oscilloscope mod we will use DSO mod and if I want to use XY mod that is in the graph mod we can use this and we can this mod is specially used to compare phases and we can test it we use to test different items this very difficult function even though I never used it because here is if this bar is here it is in phase if we have vertical line if we have round if we have oval if we have rectangular signals if we have this shape so one, one phase is available so it's not to use so we will use it as a normal now we have automat then we have contrast contrast we can set contrast from here display waveform intensity we can adjust different and uh, refresh rate always set it to auto grid intensity F2 we can adjust it here 10 that is nice so different settings we can here we have lines dotted lines or real lines we can adjust it up to our requirement so normally I set it to dotted lines dotted lines are good then horizontal menu we have setting window control major windows and then we have mark sign hold off play stop port fine horizontal position these are different settings like voltage if you want to time part vn setting as a fine or coarse it's normally coarse horizontal position what type of control you need fine or coarse we need fine because when we want to move it horizontally it should my, uh, move slowly here we have single sequence here we have run stop if it is in green, green color 
it is measuring if I will press it it will freeze the display now you can move any display up down and you can make adjustment you can make measurement here now you can adjust the voltage level and you can measure the voltage whatever you want run and stop it is now in stop condition if you will press in single sequence it will take one sweep it take one sweep and then it will stop it take one sweep and stop one sweep and stop then we have set it to trigger level set it to 50 percent when we will press it to triggers 50 percent it will use the center portion of the trigger and if I, if we want to immediately trig we want to use we will use this button force trig if any signal is not appearing we, we can use this one this button has a force trig so I hope so this video is good for you you can press bell icon button for my future videos and if you want to share it with your friends you can share it if you have any question please don't hesitate to write in the comment box so I will appreciate your comment thanks for watching assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and if you have if you did not subscribe my channel until now hit the subscribe button assalamu alaikum